Hello. Welcome to Audiology 101. This is Heather Hall, the Kentucky School for the Deaf Outreach Consultant for the Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative Area. The question posed for today is, what do you know about how we hear and where hearing losses occur? This presentation will explain about hearing and hearing loss. It will explain how the hearing process works and where in the hearing process that problems occur that lead to individuals with hearing losses. How hearing works. Let's take a moment and watch a video that explains what happens during the hearing process. Have you ever wondered how sounds make their way from the source all the way to your brain? Take a trumpet, for instance. When it's played, it makes sound waves in the air. The outer ear catches the waves, which then travel through a narrow passageway called the ear canal. The sound waves reach the eardrum, which is a membrane roughly half the size of a dime. They make the eardrum vibrate, which in turn vibrates three tiny bones called the malleus, incus, and stapes. These bones amplify or increase the sound vibrations and send them to the cochlea. The cochlea is shaped like a snail and is the size of a garden pea. It is filled with fluid, and the sound vibrations make this fluid ripple, which creates waves. Hair-like structures called stereocilia sit on top of hair cells and are grouped together as hair cell bundles inside the cochlea. The hair cells inside the cochlea ride these waves, and the hair bundles are moved. The hair bundle on top of the hair cell turns these movements into electrical signals. As the hair bundles are moved, ions rush into the top of the hair cells, causing the release of chemicals at the bottom of the hair cells. The chemicals bind to the auditory nerve cells and create an electrical signal, which travels along the auditory nerve to the brain. Different hair cells respond to different frequencies of sound. The hair cells at the base of the cochlea detect higher pitched sounds, such as a piccolo or flute. The hair cells toward the top of the spiral detect progressively lower pitched sounds, such as a trumpet or trombone. At the very top or apex of the spiral, the hair cells detect the lowest pitched sounds, such as a tuba. The auditory nerve carries the electrical signal to the brain which interprets the messages as sounds that we recognize and understand. Where hearing losses occur. Now that we've watched the video and had a good explanation of how the hearing process goes, Let's take a look at where hearing losses occur and what types of hearing losses they are from the location of which they occur. Conductive loss. Conductive hearing losses occur somewhere between the outer ear and the end of the middle ear. Something along the way is not working. It may include the outer ear, such as the pinna, and it's not developed normally. The ear canal may not be fully opened. The eardrum may be damaged or missing. It's also called a tympanum. Or the bones, the malleus, incus, and stapes, may not be working or may not be present at all. Any damage through these areas lead to a conductive loss. Sensory neural hearing losses. A sensory neural hearing loss occur in the cochlea and is a nerve damage that prevents the signals from reaching the brain so that it can be interpreted into meaningful sounds and noises. The final type of hearing loss is called a mixed loss. And a mixed loss is just as the name suggests, a mixture of a conductive loss and a sensory neural loss, where damage is in both of the conductive hearing loss area and the sensory neural loss area. Both parts of the hearing process have some sort of damage, so keep that in mind. Mix means they have both kinds. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you've learned a little bit more about the hearing process and where hearing loss has occurred. Thank you again. Have a great week.